there has only been one cellular reproducing organism created on planet Earth. It only happened one time where chemistry came together and formed a reproducing cell. It happened one fucking time. Now why, if it's so easy to happen, why, if it's so prevalent, wouldn't it have happened more than one yeah, time? I'm like that, sorry. Because you can deduce hey, that's a good it by point. that, the fact Look. that we actually live in a universe that's billions of years old. Billions of years old. I mean, Plane, the, the one state, circumstance we're talking about is planet Earth. Shut up again, then. I'm just going to... Look, you, you're going to stay yeah, on the subject. The, yeah, but that's just us. Yeah, 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 but that's just us. Preferencing our experience of life. That's got fuck all to do with my cat. It's got fuck all to do with bugs. It's got fuck all to do with anything else I've living, including you're, the you're, tree you're that's You're to fuck all, all to do with the goddamn subject. You're getting special. way the fuck off the subject. I'm just going to kick you if you're going to keep doing it's this got shit. Everything to do with the subject. No, it has nothing to do with the subject. Cats have nothing to do with the subject. So how all this you crap to, you keep raising you has to nothing to, to do with, with epigenetic. Like I mean, um, one thing. um uh, a biogenesis, which we're talking about now. We're talking about the creation of living things from non-living matter. Okay, yeah, Gary. Exactly, which is actually and the fact that it only happened time one time on planet Earth. Gary. All right, I'm just gonna kick him. If he ain't gonna shut up, I'll just kick Gary, him. Gary, I, I, uh, I have to admit that you're right. They just did a study I read that actually went all the way back to like protein statistical analysis, showing that. Even prior to life, you know, the various organic molecules uh, seem to have the common origin. Okay, and that's a long time to only have life. So maybe we won't, you know, with just this survey that's doing a couple hundred planets, we won't find life. On the other hand, um, you know, you don't know that there's not some, you know, some issue with, like, uh, once you have a successful life form, it dominates or consumes the other organic molecules. But, um, but as far as the rest of it, the thing is, they are going to be able to tell if there is oxygen and the other chemical composition, and some of which is only really long-lasting. Now, they might find it, but see, it's very unlikely to see a thousand-year burst of oxygen that might last because of other causes uh, in a planetary atmosphere, okay, in a habitable zone. So, and they are going to be able to see that because they're, they're building the, the satellites right now. They figure out very clever ways to get the million to one contrast ratio they need to actually resolve the planets at the right distance from, you know, sun-like sun -like stars. And uh, they will be able to get that composition. Now, it won't be enough to convince, you know, Venom Fang X that there's life there. And if he does get convinced, he'll think God put it there. But the fact is, you know, we will be able to make these, uh, you know, life is just a chemical process, right? So just like you can figure, hey, there's a methane cloud because of these, you know, particular processes, you can eventually deduce, you know, that uh, uh, oxygen, if you saw it in, a, in, in more than what should statistically be likely, that it would be evidence of life. And we are going to have those satellites in the next 50 years. On the other hand, you're right. I mean, I'm being really optimistic to think we'll actually find life. Because if it's as unlikely as it, it, hey, as it wait, seems wait. it might be, you'd need a million Tom planets till you saw the first one. Right, right, and then you're still right in trouble because, well, most work. of these planets you're going to be finding aren't going to be likely to be able to resolve any of that anyway. I mean, you could look at the fucking Saturn's atmosphere from a million miles away, and you're not going to be able to tell much at all. All right, because it's so mixed, and there's so much going on there in that chemistry. But you can tell um, what, what chemicals if it has are rings, there. Or what if it, I'm just saying, it just, it's not going to be that simple. From, from the distances, we're not going to be able to tell the rings from the planet. We're not going to be able to tell a lot of different things. And so I'm just saying it's not going to be definitive information. It's going to be like this stupid meteor from Mars with a fucking tiny worm in it. You know, which doesn't make any fucking sense. So, right, so a rock flies up in, uh, out of... Mars's gravity from an, a meteor impact, so it's already hot as hell, shoots out of the atmosphere, flies all the way to the Earth, and then falls into Earth's atmosphere onto our planet, which usually indicates a, a huge 
high temperatures again, and they're saying that there's um, this is evidence of life because there's oxygen, <coughs> and, um, you know, in the chemistry and uh, some sort of non-oxygen chemistry, and then there's a, a, a segment of a, a fossilized what could be described as a worm segment. So, I mean, this is the kind of desperation people are looking at, and you're saying, well, what the hell is this crap? So that's evidence they're saying that uh, microbes can survive in space. And it's just so ludicrous. There's no evidence of that whatsoever, that we've never taken a microbe and put it up in space, put it into an absolute vacuum, and had it, any part of it survive. Well, so, I mean, well, have, they have done that, that, Gary. They have done that. They found that Earth-bound. Can I... <laughs> they have found that, Gary. They have found that Earth, Earth, bacteria of Earth origin can survive in vacuum. In vacuum. Unimaginable it is. You know, it's like. But, well, but you're right. It'll be real deniable. I mean, it will be real deniable. It will be real, really deniable from the chemical composition. I'm going to interject now. I know. I piss you guys off. No, I'm, I'm just going to piss you guys off right now because this is actually true. There was a STS mission launched by NASA in 19-something, I can't remember, it was late 1990s. When the STS shuttle launched into space, do you know what they found on the outside of the window? Bugs that survived in a vacuum. And people think... The universe is a well, vacuum. I'm, I'm not sorry, a vacuum, that doesn't happen. That didn't happen. It's Don't bullshit. Like so just go away. You no, there's no shit. fucking bugs that survived on any it fucking did, shuttle. It did happen. It was proven. I'm sorry, it, it didn't proven. happen. It's a pile of it's crap. Not... Sorry. Dude, if you don't believe me, go on to NASA, go on to the BBC website, go on any website you want, it's a proven fact. We found bugs on the outside of the space shuttle that survived re-entry into like fucking, fucking space. It's like into our hard. atmosphere. It's well, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to argue about these bugs that survived uh, 2,000 degree like temperatures. I mean, it's just ludicrous. You know, like BET, BET television. It's not. not like we thought it was ludicrous that shit survived in acid. <laughs> that shit survived in volcanoes. Loser, we thought it was ludicrous, but it turned out to be true. We we well, used the to thing put is, the fucking air and the sun in different ways. You know. Wait. There's That's a couple things. Chris, First just of all, shut up, know. guys. Shut up again. Just shut up for it's a little while. You, mean, you, mean, you just you talk know, too we, much. We you talk too much nonsense. We're not doing the truth or thing man. here, okay? We're not going to talk about crop circles. All right, everyone shut up. Everyone shut up. Yeah, you shut up. That's what we want you to do. Yeah, Let pyro crop talk. circles are fucking blanks. Yeah, okay, so my understanding is yes, yeah, there are single-celled life forms that survived and, and, and piggybacked on the outside of spacecraft. The thing is, not every single place actually gets up to those high temperatures, and we're talking little tiny bugs, so they, they can be in a seam or something that is, is protected just a little tiny millimeter. It doesn't take that much. On the other hand, I was going to admit, yeah, when you find oxygen, yeah. you won't really know it's life. Life is probably rare enough that you won't find enough of them to know that you didn't just find, you know, luck out and see, you know, some volcano that happened to be spewing out oxygen. But, you know, I mean, it's going step by step, and, and, and you know, at least SETI will have, a, have you know, the oxygen-bearing planets will be the place to listen for those signals. So, yeah, I don't point really know anyway. that they'll find What's the it, point but... anyway, though? There's no real point to it. It's just, it's just, um, it's just, there's better ways to waste, if we're going to well, waste research well, money, there's better, better research to be doing in space. I mean, take some more pretty but, pictures. But, but um, Gary, you know, what's the impact on your on your view of, of, of life, you know, and the fact that life should, should, you know, not exist because of the suffering once you find out there's life all over the the galaxy, then it, you know doesn't it become more futile to argue what you argue in that respect should, as a practical thing? Well, I mean, it, it becomes right. it becomes more burdensome. Like and now, okay, now we know we're only going to clean the vomit up in this high school. We have that, to now be janitor. Well, you shut the fuck up. All right, I'm sick of you. I'm just sick of you. Do it one more time. I'm just going to kick you. I'm sick of you already. I'm talking. When I'm talking, that means you shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, where the hell was I? Um, 
Look, but you know, well, let's get to that point though of what our life is, and this, then we get to the intelligence thing. And this is the one that really bugs me: is people keep talking about this intelligence thing like there's something else to do with it but fix problems. What the fuck else is intelligence useful for? Okay, except for diagnosing something that's broken and attempting to engineer a fix. But otherwise, what the hell else is our brain? Our brain, that's why we have it. It's because it's a problem solver. It's a troubleshooter. That's why we have a brain. It's because it makes us, it makes us, a, it makes us a weapon. It makes us capable of, of engineering ourselves um, victory over um, the competition. And that's all it's for. It's just it's and so and everybody's just glorifying this thing like it's some sort of um, um, like, like everybody should be um, like like we should be pleased that there's other organisms in the universe that have um, big teeth, uh, you know, I mean a big brain instead of big teeth. I mean, what's the difference realistically between a big brain and having big teeth? I mean, it's all the same difference. So would you glorify a Tyrannosaurus if you found one on another planet? English. English. Well, it proves God's faith. Sorry, Pat, I didn't make sense with that. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta reload the stupid blog TV again. I don't know why it keeps crashing. Okay, so it, uh, it's it okay if I talk if we get back like that. No, I gotta turn my mic off, so you gotta wait till I turn my fucking mic off. I hate blog TV. By the way, there's so many fucking ads. Yeah, I really it's hate that. I mean, it really is obnoxious. I don't know how anybody can stand that. No, it's just, um, it's like, it's I mean, probability-wise, there's obviously life in the universe, but it's the way we define life is the problem, I suppose. Dude, what's with you? Are you like an egomaniac? Did you come in here saying, I'm gonna, do you have it's like a hard YouTube to, channel? It's hard to have a convo on here. It's like I keep interrupting Gary when he's trying to speak and he's like Why getting pissed off here? and stuff. Why are you here? Why are you here? I don't mean to piss you off, Gary. I'm sorry. DJ, DJ, I'm asking you a question. Why are you here? Who, me? I yeah, wanted you. to talk about what life. What do you want? Because I want to talk about life because God he wants to, No, you want to argue and you, know, and you want to you want to preach at us. No, dude, I don't argument. want to argue. No, I don't want to argue or preach. I just want to put my um. Well, I yeah, don't argue. Yeah, your truth or theories. I just give you the facts, and if you don't like them, that's your own. Yeah, well, again, that's the part that just isn't going to. That's the part that just isn't going to flow too well. You're going to have to come with more credibility no, before you, what, you do that kind of thing. You know, that kind of thing just is like just so obnoxious. When people say things like that, I'm going to give you the facts, and you know who the fuck are you? I mean, you know. I, 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 you're the celebrated fact giver. I made I don't that think to the so. fuck I am. That's the whole. Well, point. I'm just saying I'm that's made. not good enough credentials you know, for your kind of bravado. I, it's not my fault. Your, your that arrogance. Fact that maybe you know, you're, 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 you're fucking with more penis well, I than am you got. Arrogant, but that's not a bad thing. I don't go around killing people or any stupid shit. It's not my fault I'm arrogant. Maybe I'm just good at what I do. You know, Einstein didn't say he was arrogant no, or anything, but, gonna, but yeah, you, you, do you know, don't even, you don't even do Einstein would be doing what you're doing, doing yet okay? You use Fuck. Your PC based <laughs> on the formula of the mathematics that he uses, and you're trying to tell me that I'm a fucking stuck up wreck because I happen to tell you the I truth do. of logic. I don't I seem do. to get that one, actually, to be quite I honest. think it would be very interesting if Neil Bohr and Einstein were in a stick around. Based on real science. That's why I'm yeah, well, it would be pretty good, but you know, I, I don't think Einstein was a very aggressive no, but, arguer, no, but, you know what I mean? No, but you blame me for saying that I chat shit, and that I don't know what I'm talking about, yet I base all my stupid fucking evidence on the realization of reality itself. It's weird. To know that doesn't mean anything. I base all my knowledge on the realization of well, reality. Einstein was a I mean, what the fuck guy, is that? That's, that's fucking gibberish. God damn. Is that an English rat? It's not gibberish. That's, gibberish. that's why you exist. Yeah, but you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you don't know what you're talking about. You just happen to exist yeah, English because it's did that. funny or something. Lord, Lord Mouse I'm sorry, but you know what? I I practice my logic and thoughts based on the facts. I'm sorry if one of philosophers about bullshit, but I base my studies and reality on facts. I'm sorry. DJ. 
Okay. If that's a bad thing, then... No, you're then saying I'm sorry, you. but you don't mean I'm sorry. sorry. So there's no point in saying someone. I'm sorry. You're just not getting it. That's not how you have conversation with people by... You know,